Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, we are talking about the chemical mediators of inflammation and today uh, we will talk about the uh, cell derived mediators particularly the uh, arachidonic acid metabolites. But in the last uh, lecture I told you that uh, we divide the chemical mediators of inflammation into two major groups. One is the cell derived chemical mediators and the other is the plasma derived chemical mediators. Cell derived chemical mediators are further divided into those mediators that are preformed and already present in the cells in the form of granules and during inflammation they are released. The other type of cell derived chemical mediators are those that are timely synthesized by that we mean that they are not present in the cell but when inflammation occurs at that time they are synthesized and they play their role in the uh, uh, inflammatory process and uh, the most important uh, of these timely synthesized mediators include the arachidonic acid metabolites. Now what is arachidonic acid? Beta arachidonic acid is a fatty acid and actually it is derived from the uh, linoleic acid which is uh, a conditionally essential fatty acid and uh, present in the uh, phospholipid bilayer of the cell membrane. And the enzymes known as the cellular phospholipases, particularly the phospholipase A2, when it is activated by mechanical stimuli, physical stimuli, chemical stimuli, and uh, inflammatory mediators like uh, uh, a component of the complement known as the C5A. So when these phospholipases are activated, they break down the arachidonic acid. And these, the cells where these uh, cellular phospholipases are present uh, uh, include leukocytes, the mast cells, endothelial cells, and the platelets. Now arachidonic acids can be broken down into uh, uh, metabolites uh, depends on the presence of the enzyme and the uh, particular cell that is involved. The arachidonic acid metabolites are also known as the eucosanides because they uh, have the 20 carbon fatty acid present and they play a role in two important situations. One is the inflammation and the other is the hemostasis that we have studied in our hemodynamics as the primary hemostasis, secondary hemostasis and the mechanisms that are involved in blood uh, clotting. Now, once the phospholipase A2 is activated, uh, it will convert the membrane phospholipids uh, into two uh, components. One is the arachidonic acid and the other is known as the lysoplatelet activating factor. The lysoplatelet activating factor, it is actually a precursor of the platelet, actua platelet activating factor and later on it will get converted into platelet activating factor which has got, uh, uh, which has got its role in inflammation and uh, hemostasis. Now, the, what is arachidonic acid? It is a 20 carbon fatty acid which is present in the cell membrane particularly the phospholipid bilayer. Now, arachidonic acid, when it is acted, by, acted upon by the cyclooxygenase enzyme, it will result in the formation of prostaglandins. And if the enzyme present is the lipooxygenase enzyme, it will convert arachidonic acid into metabolites that are known as the leukotrienes. And the arachidonic acid metabolites are known as the eicosanoids because of the 20 carbon fatty acid which is present. Now, first of all, we will talk about the uh, uh, arachidonic acid metabolites. The arachidonic acid which is derived from the conditionally essential fatty acid known as the linoleic acid and uh, it is present in the cell membrane phospholipid bilayer and when acted upon by the phospholipase A2 enzyme, it is uh, converted into arachidonic acid and the arachidonic acid if it is acted upon by the cyclooxygenase uh, enzyme it will give rise to the formation of prostaglandins and uh, thromboxane A2 and if the enzyme uh, phyolipooxygenase acts on the arachidonic acid it will convert arachidonic acid into its metabolites which are known as the leukotrienes and lipoxins. The 
COX or cyclooxygenase enzyme, it will convert the arachidonic acid into its metabolites known as the prostaglandins. This will happen in endothelial cells. And the arachidonic acid metabolites are prostaglandins that are released in the endothelial cells. They cause vasodilation by that we mean they will increase uh, the caliber of the blood vessels and will increase the blood flow. And on the other hand, they will inhibit the platelet aggregation. So we can say that they are they induce inflammation but inhibit clotting and inhibit hemostasis. On the other hand, if the platelets where the enzyme known as the thromboxane synthase is present, it will convert the arachidonic acid into metabolites known as the thromboxane A2, which is present in the platelets. In the endothelial cells, the enzyme present is the prostacycline synthase, which converts arachidonic acid into prostaglandins, and in the platelets, the enzyme thromboxane synthase is present, which will convert arachidonic acid into thromboxane A2. And here, at this point, you can see the thromboxane A2 present in the platelets, it will cause vasoconstriction, and it will cause, uh, it will promote platelet aggregation. By that, we mean that it is, uh, it causes the conditions which are pro-coagulant. Similarly, if the arachidonic acid is acted upon by the lipooxygenase enzyme, which is mainly present in the neutrophils, it will get arachidonic acid to be broken down into leukotrienes and lipoxines. The leukotrienes, they induce inflammation. They are inflammatory mediators, while the lipoxines, they are anti-inflammatory. And uh, here you can see that these arachidonic acid metabolites they act against each other. Now, one thing important here I want to tell you that the steroids, particularly the glucocorticoids, which are normally secreted by the uh, uh, zone of fasciculata of the adrenal cortex, they inhibit the enzymes phospholipase and stop inflammation at the beginning. And therefore, steroids are also known as the magic drugs. And many people use steroids inappropriately uh, in many diseases and where it inhibits inflammation and uh, the patient gets uh, all will dramatically. But by inhibiting the inflammation, uh, the steroids and the glucocorticoids, what they do, that they suppress the immune system. And suppression of the immune system of a person can give rise to so many complications. Now, first, we come to the cyclooxygenase pathway, COX pathway, in which the enzyme cyclooxygenase acts on arachidonic acid and give rise to prostaglandins and thromboxane A2. Now, there are drugs like aspirin, endomethacine, and other non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents that inhibit the enzyme cyclooxygenase and we use these drugs for pain, fever, and uh, other uh, conditions. So, in the endothelial cells, the cyclooxygenase enzyme will convert arachidonic acid into prostaglandins. And the prostaglandins, they are the PGI2 in the, in the endothelial cells, also known as the prostacycline. And the prostacycline causes vasodilation and inhibit platelet aggregation. So, we say that it induces inflammation, but it inhibits blood clotting. In the platelets, the cyclooxygenase enzyme convert arachidonic acid into thromboxane A2, and which causes vasoconstriction and promote platelet aggregation. By that, we can say that it causes a situation which is pro-coagulant. In the mast cells, the cyclooxygenase enzymes convert arachidonic acid into PGD2 and PGE2. Now, the PGE2 is particularly responsible for the pain and fever, and here, the PGE2 and PGD2, it causes vasodilation and increased uh, vascular permeability, which may result in uh, tissue edema and exudate formation. Now, coming to the lipooxygenase pathway, here the lipooxygenase enzymes convert arachidonic acids into uh, phyohpete, hydroxy. Uh, Ecotetranoic acid. Now, the 5-HPET 
HPET E can be converted into leukotriene A4, which can be converted into leukotriene B4 in the neutrophils, and which is a strong chemotactic agent. Now, the leukotriene A4 can be converted into other three leukotrienes known as the leukotriene C4, leukotriene D4, and leukotriene E4. And these leukotrienes are particularly very important in the lungs because they cause bronchospasm and the patient suffers from conditions like uh, status asthmaticus and bronchial asthma. And they increase vascular permeability, therefore causing exudation, which along with the bronchospasm or constriction of the bronchi cause serious uh, symptoms and signs to the patient. And in such like conditions, we use drugs that antagonize these leukotrienes, particularly in patients of uh, bronchial asthma. On the other hand, the lipooxygenase enzymes uh, in the neutrophils, it will convert the arachidonic acid into uh, uh, 5-HPET and then into lipoxin A4 and lipoxin B4. These are known as the lipoxins. And remember that the lipoxins, they totally work against the inflammation because they inhibit neutrophil adhesion, adhesion and chemotaxis. So here again we can see that the leukotrienes and lipoxins, they work against each other and antagonize the actions of each other. So what we conclude that in leukocytes, mast cells, endothelial cells and platelets, the two enzymes cyclooxygenase and phyolipoxygenase, they cause and result in the formation of, for example, the cyclooxygenase result in the formation of prostaglandins and thromboxane A. And these two are totally opposed against each other. Similarly, uh, uh, the lipooxygenase uh, enzyme converts uh, arachidonic acid into leukotrienes and lipoxins. And here again, the two uh, metabolites oppose the effects of each other. The, in talking about the cyclooxygenase enzyme or COX enzyme, uh, it, there are two types of uh, cyclooxygenase enzymes. One is known as the COX-1 and the other is known as the COX-2. COX-1 is present uh, constitutionally uh, in all cells and present in most tissues. And it is said that it has got certain beneficial roles. While COX-2 is not normally or constitutionally present in normal tissues, but it is produced during the inflammatory process where inflammation and tissue injury occurs. And here again, uh, our research is going on to use only COX-2 inhibitors. The idea behind using only COX-2 inhibitor is that the COX-2 uh, enzyme is activated only during the inflammatory process. And here we show the uh, protective functions of the COX-1 enzyme, uh, which play a role in fluid and electrolyte balance in the kidneys and which give cytoprotection in the gastrointestinal tract. So by inhibiting only the COX-2 enzyme, which is produced during inflammation, we uh, make save the beneficial effects of the COX-1 enzyme. But here again, uh, we can see that the COX-2 enzyme, which is produced during inflammation, and the COX-1 enzyme, uh, which is constitutively uh, present in the tissues, but uh, is uh, produced in excess during inflammation, both of them, they will activate the formation of the thromboxane A2 in the platelets. Right? So the COX-2 enzyme inhibition uh, inhibits the prostacycline, which causes vasodilation and inhibits platelet aggregation, but it doesn't inhibit the thromboxane A2, and this can result uh, in vasoconstriction and platelet aggregation and prothrombotic uh, conditions. And uh, uh, if you have read, there are cases uh, in which the COX-2 inhibitor uh, are used and they have caused increased risk of cardiovascular and cerebrovascular uh, events. Now, the lipooxygenase pathway in the neutrophils, when the neutrophils play their role in 
inflammation. So at that time, these neutrophils produce the leukotrienes and uh, lipoxins. But after the inflammation is over and when the leukocytes are uh, in the tissues, they will produce the lipoxin, particularly the lipoxin A4 and lipoxin B4, and which will inhibit uh, neutrophil adhesion and chemotaxis and are anti-inflammatory. The lipooxygenase enzyme uh, in the mast cells, particularly uh, in patients of bronchial asthma, lead to the uh, production of leukotriene A4, which can be converted into leukotriene B4, uh, particularly in the neutrophil and macrophages, and which is a strong chemotactic agent. And uh, leukotriene A4 can be converted into other three leukotrienes, especially in the mast cells, the leukotriene C4, leukotriene D4, and E4. And they cause bronchospasm and increase vascular permeability, so they will make the bronchi narrow, and they will make exudatory fluid accumulate in the lungs and uh, create problems in the in patients with the bronchial asthma. And particularly, we use antagonists are those drugs that antagonize or inhibit the effect of these leukotrienes and give relief to the patients of bronchial asthma. The lipoxins which are produced by the uh, neutrophils after the inflammation is over uh, uh, in the tissues they are lipoxin A4, lipoxin B4, and they inhibit neutrophil adhesion and inhibit the uh, chemotoxis. Now, here we get together all the effects of the uh, arachidonic acid metabolites, and we can see that the cyclooxygenase enzyme result in the formation of prostaglandins and thromboxane while the lipooxygenase enzyme results in the formation of lipoxins and leukotrienes. And they have uh, the uh, prostaglandins, they have role uh, totally against the thromboxane A2. And similarly, in the lipooxygenase pathway, the lipoxins, they antagonize the effects of the leukotrienes. Here in this slide, uh, uh, we have uh, concluded uh, all what we said in the arachidonic acid metabolites and in the uh, lipoxygenase pathway, first of all, the arachidonic acid is converted into uh, hydroperoxycosatetranic acid, and which is further converted into the uh, other metabolites of the arachidonic acid, which play their role in inflammation and hemostasis. Now, in the beginning of the lecture, I told you that the paspolipase enzyme results in the formation of two components. One is arachidonic acid, and the other is the lysopaf, which is precursor of the platelet activating factor. So, paspolipase A2 can convert the membrane paspolipids into platelet activating factor, and this is stimulated by the neutrophils, uh, monocytes, basophils, and endothelial cells, and these cells have uh, the uh, uh, membrane phospholipids, which are converted by the activated phospholipase uh, A2 enzyme into platelet activating factor. And platelet activating factor particularly uh, have their role in the platelets and cause aggregation and degranulation of the platelets with the release of various granules and uh, platelet activating factor also cause bronchoconstriction and narrowing of the bronchi. Uh, it also causes vasodilation and increased permeability. And remember that the platelet activating factor is 1,000 times more potent than histamine in causing vasodilation and increased permeability. And the platelet activating, acti platelets activating factor also causes the synthesis of mediators from the other cells. And it is involved in leukocyte adhesion, chemotaxis, degranulation and respiratory burst. Now, the two uh, inflammatory mediators, the interleukin-1 and tissue necrotic factor, uh, which are produced by macrophages, mast cells, and endothelial cells, uh, after they are stimulated by the microbial uh, products like bacterial endotoxin or the immune complexes, and the uh, mediators which are released by the activated T-lymphocytes and activated inflammasomes 
which are uh, proteins, group of proteins present in the cells and they cause the release of tumor necrotic factor and interleukin 1 and they will, uh, the two, they can cause endothelial cell activation uh, causing expression of adhesion molecules with increased leukocyte binding and recruitment and enhance the production of additional uh, cytokines, for example, chemokines, uh, which are, uh, which cause chemotoxins and eucosanides, which are arachidonic acid metabolites. And they increase the thrombogenicity of the endothelium. By that, we mean that the endothelium becomes more pro-coagulant or thrombogenic. And the uh, tumor necrosis factor and interleukin-1 also cause fibroblast activation and play their role in healing and tissue repair and also cause increased extracellular matrix production. And these two mediators, they induce the systemic acute pace reaction by entering into the circulation and we uh, uh, check the acute pace reaction uh, uh, during the investigations of inflammatory process. Now, in this slide, we conclude that prostaglandin, nitric oxide, and histamine, they cause vasodilation, while histamine, serotonin, and components of the complement like C3A and C5A, which are also known as anapylotoxins, and uh, the component of the kinin system known as the bradykinin, and the leukotrienes, which are produced by the life oxygenase pathway, the platelet activating factor, and the P substance, they will cause increased permeability, edema, and tissue exudation and the tumor necrotic factor uh, interleukin 1 uh, and chemokines, the anapylotoxins, the leukotrienes and certain bacterial products, they are involved in chemotoxis, leukocyte recruitment and activation. And the prostaglandins, IL-1 and tumor necrotic factor along with the bradykinin, it is responsible for the pain and fever and this question is most frequently asked in MCQs and SCQs. Now, the lysosomal enzymes which are released from uh, the lysosomes in the neutrophils, particularly the hydrolytic enzymes, proteases, and along with the reactive oxygen species and nitric oxide, which are uh, free radicals, they will cause tissue damage. So here we conclude the role of mediators in different reactions of uh, inflammation. The conclusion is that the vasoactive amines, which are preformed inflammatory mediators, they are two, histamine and serotonin. The arachidonic acid metabolites are prostaglandins and leukotrienes. And the cytokines, uh, they are produced by many cell types and they usually act at short range and mediate multiple effects mainly in the leukocyte recruitment and migration. And tumor necrotic factor, interleukin 1, interleukin 6, and interleukin 12, which is produced by the macrophages, they have important roles, particularly they act as uh, chemokines and cause uh, chemotoxins. Reactive oxygen species and uh, nitrous oxide, they are uh, uh, involved in microbial killing and sometimes uh, tissue injury. And in addition, the hydrolytic enzymes contained in the lysosomal granules, they have got their role in microbial killing and tissue injury. Thank you very much.